At the beginning of 2017, a consortium of equipment manufacturing suppliers came together to create a new machine-to-machine -machine communication standard now known as IPC Hermes 9852. This was to replace the very simple SMEMA machine-to-machine -machine protocol, which was really based on a simple I'm a, I'm a machine and I'm ready and I have a board to give to you. We have now developed a product based upon the Hermes standard, so it seems appropriate to review it. Um, we also re uh, released a blog um, in 2017 to give us our uh, to give our first impressions of the standard. Um, so first of all, um, I think it's a good idea to just briefly go over that blog um, and to see if our opinions of it have changed at all. Um, the blog really highlighted what the standard highlighted, which was the fact that it was based upon um, sockets and XML. Um, now, I think it's a good time to talk about the fourth industrial revolution and what it exactly is, because you can quite get, get mistaken to see the fourth industrial revolution as a technology revolution. Well, it's not and our industry is based upon uh, males who love to talk about technologies, products and products um, and really this is about a people revolution. It is essentially a flag to say that there has been 25 years worth of developers working within what they call the, uh, the digital economy and those people have gone off and basically digitalized other businesses um, and quite often these um, people have used the web and the web has matured in that period of time. So what the, what the fourth industrial revolution is, is the alignment of the two industries. And so what we need to do as our industry and manufacturing is to make sure that we're talking the same language as that of the digital economy. So the the question is quite simple, is to go up to someone working in the digital economy and saying, these are the technologies we're going to use, do you use them already? And if they do, then there's a, there's a, there's a, a lesser of a um, understanding and a ramp up of, of what we do and what they do. So I think that's going to be the, the baseline of, of or the, the, the measure I'm going to use when I'm reviewing the Hermes standard and to say, would someone in the digital economy understand it or use it, the technologies of, the, of today? So, XML and sockets. Would someone in the digital economy using web, web um, would, using, would they be using sockets or XML? Uh, I think the answer to that is no. XML is a meta language it encapsula encapsulates the data and essentially it was the flavor of the month or the flavor of the year at a particular point in along the last 25 years. It was native in C Sharp or .NET languages, um, but it replaced many other meta type languages of before. And more importantly, others have been released uh, after it. And so while it, the meta language, you still get the data you need, but you have to process that meta language. Um, and if we can avoid having to uh, map different meta languages to other meta languages, then that's probably a, a, a first hurdle to prevent. So let's look at the digital economy. Digital economy is based on web. The, the quite well-known uh, logic language of the web is JavaScript. And what does JavaScript use? It uses JSON. Now again, to, to move between the XML and JSON, there's not a lot of difference, really. You know, it, 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 there, are lang there are libraries out there that can quite easily move between the two. So it's not a big hurdle to change. Um, but it is a, a 
bit of a flag that maybe we're using technology of yesteryear. Let's now look at sockets. Sockets are very basic ways of communicating over a network. They essentially use IP addresses and port numbers. And the intention was that you use a different port number for all different services on your network. That created a problem, still creates a problem today, because firewalls block certain ports and but generally have some other ports open already. So you're again you're creating a barrier to a plug and play utopia. Sockets, by their nature, by their term, by their, their name, sound quite heavyweight. Sounds you just plug it in and it starts working and you've got a connection. The reality is that your connection could be lost and you might not know it until you, you message, uh, you create a message um, and you will get a connection disconnected. And so that's why the Hermes standard has a, um, um, I believe it's a, a live message, basically it's a ping message. And you keep sending that out with the intention that if the, the, the connection disconnects, then you can quite quickly reconnect it. It seems, it seems like a lot of these problems have been fixed in the past. Again, we've had 25 years, and it seems that this is a a protocol that's trying to replace a simple protocol. They're try, therefore, it's trying to keep it simple, stupid. But at the same time, there's a lot of problems that have been fixed in the past that we could have bundled into this standard from day one. And again, the difference between XML and JSON is not a problem if you have the 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 kind of the deployment or the deliverable that you can quickly do an update. Um, so that's sockets and XML, and I have the same opinion I'd had when I wrote the blog in 2017. Since then, I have uh, uh, we have used the standard on our product, um, and so. On the whole, it's just XML messages, but it's often XML messages that are uh, send and response messages. And there are other technologies out there that do this out the box. So, so the, the Hermes standard basically says you set, you send a request and then it sends something back, or you just push push some information out. Um, there is a language, there is a, sorry, there is a, a communication standard that is very well known and it's called HTTP. HTTP, by its nature, you send it out a response and it gives you the whatever you want back. And within the HTTP standard, there are lots of options that could have been used here. So one a good example is you actually sometimes send out what you want back, the, the meta language you want back. So you could have said, I want XML back, here's the request, I want my XML back, here's the request, I want JSON back, or I want a, a format that's maybe legacy or whatever within the industry back. And so HTTP would have been my flavour of use here. With HTTP, there are gets and, push, um, gets and posts. So with all this data stuff, what you're trying to avoid is a state machine. HTTP is, tries, tries to be stateless, uh, which means sometimes the state machines of machine of your connecting machines get out of sync. And so you need a situation where both it's pull data and push data. If I'm switching on for the first time and I'm suddenly in a, in a, in a line, then I might want to pull the data from the machines next to me so I get those data, the, the data and they respond to me. Um, the same with pushing data. You can post a, some data to a to a endpoint that's kind of registered with you in some some regards, and uh, this was all this is all baked into HTTP. HTTP also works over port eighty generally by default, or port four four three for secure. Um, and again, you're not having the problems with firewalls because you're 
you're you're using that port for that purpose but also you can bundle in other services on top of that and you can direct those services once you've got through the, the initial port 80 problem or could be a problem if there's a firewall problem so http would have been my flavor to use and json because once again going back to the digital economy yes the digital economy is pretty much based on the web they use http it's called REST, uh, the architecture, basically using URLs, the, the www dot blah, 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 um, as, as ways of saying to the next, the responder, what you want back. So I would have used HTTP with JSON. But again, you could have bundled in version, version control. So you could have said, well, maybe today we use XML and tomorrow we'll use JSON. And you could have some, some, some smartness in, built in that serializes the data depending on what version you're using. That kind of highlights to me um, more of a version problem. So the deliverable of, of the Hermi standard has been... A little bit old school and you have to remember that this wasn't an IPC, IPC standard from from the start um, so I imagine there's been a lack of resource around it it's probably been a one-man band job um, but what it what I have concern now I'm raising my points and we weren't originally allowed within the consortium because we weren't a, a software. Um, we weren't an equipment manufacturer, which was a good thing because what it, that actually did is allowed us to go away and use the standard without being in the club. And actually, that's a good test because we don't want emails, phone calls, plane, um, flights on planes to go places to, to understand stuff. We want it. We want a situation where people can just roll out standards without having to have any contact because any contact is, is more resource, more time. But now I'm making my points. My concern, because of the way it's been rolled out, because it's been rolled out on, in a document um, on a website, but there has been a test harness, which is great. Um, there is C++ code or C, C code. Um, but what happens now when we want to go to version 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4? Does everyone basically get stuck on 1.1? And that's where an SDK would have been useful. Um, as I said, there is software, uh, there's this code for a C implementation of the standard we were supplied a wrapper for C for .NET. Uh, we didn't use it because there was so much serialization code um, that .NET does out the box. And we also just used that as a reason to understand what was going on. So we, we, we've done what we shouldn't have done, which is implemented it from scratch. But what do we do in the future? What happens with the deliverable? There's no SDK. Now, in the modern world, in the digital economy world, what you have is a repository of code. You might have lots of languages. You might have C, uh, .NET, Java, and maybe even a, uh, a kind of Node.js kind of version, or maybe even a Python version. You try and cover all the kind of high-level bases of all the languages. You create an SDK, you put it on a repository, and so when there's an upgrade, you basically hit one button on your development environment and it brings down the latest and greatest. And then there might be a bit of rework plumbing things in, but essentially you've always got everyone in the community has always got the same implementation. What's going to happen in the future? I don't know. And I'm worried that Hermes will become the next SMEMA. We have this for the next 20 years and we'll be stuck on XML and we've been stuck on sockets. And what we want is that plug and play. We want that discover what's on your network, you click a button, you say, I want to connect to that machine there, and it, and it then just connects. There's no IP addresses, there's, there's no port numbers. 
you know, when I connect to my Chromecast from my, my mobile device, I'm not typing an IP address and port number. I'm basically going down a list and pressing bu a button. So I'm worried about the future of the standard. That said, of course, in the wings, or not even in the wings, I would say, probably more, more of a focus is the CFX standard. That is based upon uh, JSON. And that is based upon a public a published subscribe mentality. mentality. Um, even though both Hermes and CFX have this marketing wrapper around it, which makes it seem like it's a new thing, but really the technologies are well, well known behind the covers. And maybe we, we need to focus on the technologies rather than the branding, because that might again help the language and the communication with other people within the digital economy. So to summarize, maybe we're using technologies that are a bit old school, not aligned to the digital economy. However, we've been very su successful with using the actual standard itself. Um, my only one criticism of the current implementation and this is the implementation found on GitHub, the C, the C implementation that is based, I believe, based within the test harness, is that whenever you get a error, a message that you can't understand or it's inappropriate, inappropriate within the state machine, you get a socket disconnection. I don't know why there's a link between the connection, the, the transport mechanism, the socket, and the message there is um, no reason to, to link the two. It is like going to a website and getting a uh, page not found error and then your broadband and getting disconnected. What I think, the reason I think that this is occurring is because it's a way of restarting the state machine. I would decouple the transport mechanism being sockets with the messaging of the Hermes standard. There is no link between the two and we shouldn't have a disconnect. Our implementation doesn't disconnect. But uh, I hope that's an easy um, improvement to make. Um, but again, it's based upon the code on GitHub. So I imagine anyone who, who's implemented it would have implemented the same thing. So again, it goes back to how are we going to version control this stuff? I think that... Um, it's doing its job today, but I worry for the future. And um, of course, what I see is an alignment between the CFX standard and also um, naturally, uh, hopefully things will evolve, but I'm hoping that people, developers who implement this standard are thinking about the bigger picture. I'm not saying well, it's only gonna be based on sockets. It's only going to be based on XML. Broaden, broaden the spec. Use this as a baseline. Don't be customer driven. Don't be, this is the spec, this is what we're going to do. Use the spec as the baseline. So I think it's, it's, uh, it's perfectly usable today. Um, and uh, I, I'm interested to see the, the, the progress along the way of how it develops. So if you have been, thank you for watching. Mm -hmm.